morning. I am here with Laurence Lafon, who is the COO and CMO of Microsoft. So you're very busy. Absolutely. And so when, when Paul called me and said that we were going to be discussing with each other this morning, um, I obviously stalked you on LinkedIn a little bit. Check out what you've done, and you've got a very impressive career. But there was, there was one little line, and I didn't tell you I was going to ask you about this, but there's one little line on your uh, LinkedIn profile I wanted to ask you about this morning. Um, it looks like in early 2000, 2001, you were a part of a startup called Woonaz. And so you left the corporate world to start your own company. What, can you give me a little background on that? What, what led to that decision? Yeah. Well, so I've been in... Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks for being here so early. I know it's uh, Friday morning, 9.30. It's not so easy, so... It's almost the weekend. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've been in the digital industry for all my career, and I decided effectively in the 2000s, you know, that was the great timing around digital in, um, in the world, and in France in particular, and so I decided to, to found... Uh, this uh, little startup called Wunos, and it was in the B2C space. We wanted to create a knowledge management platform uh, to connect basically um, people who had questions in any kind of fields with other people who had answers in right. those fields. So that was a great, uh, great experience, great opportunity. Too short, but... Too short. Uh, and, and have you been able to take that kind of startup mindset with you through your career? I mean, I know you've worked for a lot of large tech corporations. Yeah. Is yeah, well absolutely, Microsoft? and uh, you know that's really what I like uh, in this space of uh, digital um, economy, where you always keep learning, you always keep testing new things. We talk a lot about these, you know, learn fast, fail fast approach, uh, which I think fits very well with the digital environment we are in. Because if you don't transform yourself, I mean, you're out of the game. Right, exactly, and I think you know that's a good transition into Microsoft and what it's doing in AI. Now, I know you guys have been aggressive in that space, and I would really love you to give us kind of a general overview of uh, Microsoft's strategy and where you're focusing and what, what's, what's coming out today that we yeah. can be excited about. Uh, so, you know, I'd like to introduce that with the, the mission we have at Microsoft, and since uh, Satya came back, came on uh, as a CEO three years ago, uh, he really worked hard on re-establishing the mission for Microsoft. Why are we here? What is it that we want to achieve? And uh, he established a very clear mission, which is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And when you start with that mission, it means you, know, you have to think about any innovation you do to really help people achieve more, to really have an impact on how we will transform you know, our lives, our work for good. And so when you look at artificial intelligence today, we are totally convinced that AI is going to impact everybody's life. Basically, not only at work, but also at home. So we have to look at that. We have to look at how we can integrate AI in every technology, every innovation we have right now, in all our products, to ensure that we take the best out of it. And one thing very important I would like to highlight as well is the, you know, the convictions we have around AI. There's a lot of buzz, there's a lot of you know, talks around AI. Is it good, is it bad, will it replace the humans or not? Uh, our view is really that AI will help amplify the human ingenuity, and that's what we really want to focus on, to look at how we can, with AI, be better, focus on the areas where we can create, where we can innovate, and maybe have artificial intelligence technologies support us in our you know, daily lives, uh, automate some tasks which uh, we had to do before and we won't have to do anymore thanks to artificial intelligence. So we invest a lot uh, in this space. Um, we have right now a specific division uh, in our R&D um, teams. We have 8,000 engineers right now, solely focusing on AI. How many across. again? 8,000. 8,000 engineers working yes. on this? And uh, one incredible. year ago, it was 5,000. So it keeps growing, it keeps booming. Uh, it's really a, a huge uh, area for us where we invest, and we, we want to instill AI in, as I said, you know, all our other business application services, but we also want to bring AI to everybody. So we are in this approach of offering through our cloud platform AI technology for the startups, for our partners, for our customers to take the most and the benefits out of what we do. And, and I think that's so interesting about how you're approaching AI and really thinking through how it's going to affect you know, the world long term and how it should be impl implicated into our lives. How far along are we in that journey? I mean, are we just at the very, very, very beginning or are we actually starting to see real change in the way that AI is, is, is touching our lives? Well, you know, I think, I mean, we've been, um, you've all uh, tested, I'm sure, uh, somehow either Cortana or Siri or Alexa uh, and so on. So, of course, the personal assistant is an area where we see huge 
uh, progress and rapid adoption of uh, AI technology, and there's still a lot to do in uh, natural language uh, you know, uh, processing and understanding. So we are at the early days of those technologies, but we see uh, those uh, personal assistants taking a bigger role in our lives already. Chatbots, another technology which is uh, relying on AI. I mean, uh, you, you start seeing more and more websites offering chatbot services to help. It's almost becoming the norm. You know, whereas yeah. last year, that's all we talked about at Francis AI. Not the only thing, but we talked a lot about chatbots. And now, within the year, it's been integrated into a exactly. lot of... Exactly. And there's hundreds and thousands of our customers who are really looking at how they can, you know, leverage your chatbot platform to integrate easily and rapidly in their services, in their applications. Uh, and then, of course, there's, you know, a lot of projects around AI that we see with our customers, which are deeper integrated in their processes, uh, in their digital transformation. I can take a few examples like uh, Renault Nissan, for instance, who is working on their connected vehicle. And obviously, you cannot think about a connected vehicle without artificial intelligence technology. So this is going to take a while because you really need to go deep. You need, you need to build your own algorithms. You need to develop you know, through deep learning and so on and machine learning those uh, intelligent algorithms that will help basically get autonomous cars or uh, connected vehicles. That's an area we had uh, earlier this week uh, during our Microsoft Experience conference where we talked a lot about AI as well. Schneider Electric, for instance, showing how they are transforming their business thanks to IoT and AI. We see a lot of direct connections, actually, between IoT and artificial intelligence. For, for well, collecting the data and then treating the data. Exactly. Right. So getting the data out of those uh, connected you know, devices and then looking at how you can really work with the data, get more intelligent services, more uh, predictive services in maintenance, for instance, and so on. So there's plenty of uh, examples of applications that uh, we are working on with our customers. They are all going through digital transformation right now, I mean. You take any kind of industry, you can take health, education, uh, manufacturing, uh, retail, I mean, you name it, all industries are really, of course, going through this transformation and looking at how technology can help them address new markets, launch new services. And in every single of those uh, new services and new applications, AI has a key role to play to really accelerate and help develop those new services. Well, and I think at Microsoft, you have a unique position because you have so many clients that you're working with and you touch so many different industries. And so for the large corporations that are now starting to figure out what their AI strategy is going to be, what should they be thinking about and what should they be considering as they start to invest in this space? What are you talking with them about? Well, you know, I think it, it back again, I mean, it's not all about the technology. It's what you do with it. So it's really starting with the, the use case. Huh? with the business impact, with what you want to deliver, what is the, the goal or what's the challenge you are looking at uh, uh, addressing, and then how can technology can help. So we are really more and more with our customers working on you know, design thinking phases and visioning, so really taking first the business challenge and then looking at how technology can help. And that's where we are really not working on our own, but really also you know, embarking with the startups, with our partners who have solutions, who have technology that can help solve those challenges from our customers. So we are more and more on this kind of you know, rapid uh, design thinking, pilot phases and so on to ensure you can start with the technology, you can learn from it and move on with that. Yeah, it's very interesting. And I think, you know, this room is kind of a mix today. I think you've got a lot of, uh, you know, people coming from the corporate world as well as the startup world. And when you see companies like Microsoft investing so heavily and being so bullish on AI, the question becomes is, you know, can startups compete and can they offer value? Um, I, actually, I obviously have my opinions on that, but I would love to see, you know, what, your, what, what Microsoft's, you know, kind of thoughts are on the startup space and how they're going to contribute to this AI revolution. So... Absolutely, we see huge opportunity and huge value uh, you know, to work with startups and to help startups develop further on AI. Uh, the approach we have, as I said, is really you know, to come with a platform to bring our technology and get this technology and bring this technology to the startups, to our partners. So the idea is through APIs, for instance, and SDKs to help access to cognitive services, for instance. I mean, there's huge investments made to develop cognitive services, so uh, voice recognition, um, image recognition, sentiment, sentiment recognition, and so on and so forth. So getting those capabilities available for startups, for partners, to develop value-added services on top of that. Um, and so that's what we really uh, you know, aim at doing, not developing everything on our own, but providing this technology 
to help startups basically build upon that and offer their own services. And I think there's, again, looking at all the industries which are impacted by uh, those technologies, looking at how they can uh, leverage and bring value on top of that. There's huge opportunities for startups today to build on top of what we do. We were discussing with, uh, with Paul about, you know, not reinventing the wheel, and I think sometimes, you know, we have a tendency, and maybe I don't know if that's a French spirit, but sometimes to reinvent the wheel. So uh, one of the key things I would really uh, recommend is look at what the technology is, what we can provide today as out of the box, and then build upon that. And that's what we want to do also with the startups we are uh, investing in and working with. Yeah, and and so you, in particular. you mentioned something interesting. You said investing in startups. So I'm interested to understand how that's working. And then how are you working today with startups here in France? Is there I, actually, I know the answer to this, but I would love you yeah. to talk about the AI factory and how that's being yeah. integrated into your strategy. And so, so maybe before I may be coming to France in particular, so we have done uh, recently an investment in, um, well, we acquired actually a startup called Maluba, uh, who maybe you know in, uh, in Canada, totally dedicated to deep learning um, uh, capabilities. So we're also looking at investing and acquiring uh, startups will help us accelerate, I would say, the development, uh, accelerate the innovations around artificial intelligence in the world. So there's also room for, uh, for Microsoft Ventures for investment and, and acquisitions. On top of that, um, we've been working with startups, you know, for many, many years, uh, in particular in France, where we have invested in programs to support startups, so not necessarily to acquire or fund startups, but really to help with our technology, the, yeah. with uh, engineers, with uh, technical resources, and with go-to-market capabilities. So that's what we have decided to do this year on AI in particular. So we want to accelerate the uh, development of the AI ecosystem in France, and we decided to work with uh, Station F, uh, and what's Station F? I'm just playing. Go ahead. I'm just trying to <laughs> who, who get a joke know in there. Station Everyone F knows Station F. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the place where I'm sure everybody knows about Station F. So uh, we decided to, uh, to partner with Station F and to build a program dedicated to artificial intelligence. So the idea is really to help accelerate uh, the development of startups, the uh, emergence of startups around AI in France. And through this program, we want to bring our technical engineers, our technical capabilities, and of course our platform and our technology, as I mentioned, uh, but as well our go-to-market approach to help startups connect with customers and rapidly engage on very concrete projects to further develop the technology and to start impacting uh, industries where they need effectively this kind of solution. So we started this AI factory uh, and we have already seven startups who are part of this AI, AI factory and who will play a kind of catalyst role to help other startups, you know, join this factory and accelerate again their innovation and development around uh, AI. And we have in those seven startups uh, some that I've seen uh, will come on stage later on like Scortex, we have Recast, we have AB Tasty, Hugging Face and so on. So startups which are already a bit advanced. That a lot of us probably already know, you know, that we're, yes. we're excited about and we've been watching. So Exactly. And they will help. The idea is that they also help us and help the other startups, you know, accelerate again their development. INRIA uh, is a famous uh, French research institute, as you know. INRIA is a partner of Microsoft around AI. We've been uh, developing a joint lab for many, many years. And they will also be part of this uh, great AI factory project and help also bring their uh, knowledge, bring their, uh, you know, early um, research for the, uh, the startups who want to develop in this space. So we are super excited about this opportunity because we think it's the right timing, it's the right uh, environment, and there's a huge momentum around AI in France. We have to work as an ecosystem to ensure, you know, we can rapidly develop that and, and provide the opportunity for startups to really uh, come to market yeah, in and, and, I, and I agree, it's, it's just a really exciting time in France, and you know, um, we're always thinking about that kind of transatlantic business environment, and so I'm really interested in you know, when you're having these discussions at the global office about strategy, um, and you guys are starting the AI factory in France, and there's obviously investment happening here. I mean, how does Microsoft see France play into its kind of yeah. global strategy? So, you know, we, uh, I think in the past we, uh, we always used to be uh, a bit shy and say, well, you know, there's the Silicon Valley, and we are so small, and so on. Um, 
this week we had the, uh, the opportunity to have two of our big uh, executives in France for Microsoft Experience. So we had Peggy Johnson, who is the EVP for corporate development. So she's really driving worldwide all the partnership and acquisition strategy. She's the one running the Microsoft Venture uh, Fund that we, uh, we launched. So, so her being here was a big opportunity for the French startups in front of her, I hope. Exactly. Yeah. So um, she came here, she went to Station F, and she was, I mean, in her words, literally blown up by what she saw. Uh, she was really impressed by uh, Station F, by all those startups who are really, you know, the, 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 yeah, the pace and the environment. Uh, she was really also very impressed by the AI Academy that we, uh, we presented during Microsoft Experience where we had 40 projects touching different industries, touching different, you know, um, business uh, environments where, where we showcased those concrete startups and, and projects around AI. So, we have really room, and she said, wow, I didn't realize France was so hot on AI, so I think, you know, we, we, we shouldn't be shy, we should move on. And Harisham, who is also the second uh, EVP, who is running all the um, uh, research around uh, AI uh, at Corp, so he's the one running those 8,000 engineers I was mentioning. Okay. He was also super impressed by the momentum and uh, the activities we have around AI in France. So, I think this is the right timing. You know, there's a lot of uh, appetite from our corporation to look at what we do and to help and support those activities. And Peggy's going to come back uh, because she saw some interesting uh, startups, you know, in the, uh, in, in, in the series. So, um, and, and that's exactly what we love to hear. And I think that there's really something special about the ecosystem because it's so dense. It's not, I mean, even in the Silicon Valley, you have a more spread out, you know, ecosystem in terms of just, you know, geographical space. Yes. So being able to see all of that in, you know, one afternoon is pretty impressive. Um, so do you think, for, I mean, can France really position itself as the AI hub in, in, in Europe, in the world? Is that a, is that a possibility? Did, did, could Microsoft see that happening? Absolutely. And, you know, I, um, I, I really invest a lot of my, my energy, my time, and the teams in France to make it happen or to contribute because we need to be humble. I mean, we're only one small piece in the, in the game. Oh, but we, we can be humble, but we can also have a little swagger, right? You know, what's happening yeah, here is pretty I, exciting. Yeah, but I think it's, yeah. So that's why, you know, I think this initiative around France's AI is so important and so critical because we need to work together as an ecosystem. We need to, you know, ensure that we have the environment from a political standpoint, but also from an economic standpoint and with the large companies such as Microsoft, but also the startups and so on to make it happen, to ensure that we can effectively, you know, take this opportunity to raise uh, great startups in, in France. I mean, we have, as uh, Damien was mentioning, we have great mathematicians, we have super schools who can help also, you know, bring the engineers, bring the, the, the knowledge to help you know, develop great innovations on AI. So let's just do it. And, and just as a, as a final point, and I, and I love the energy and the just do it approach, um, you know, I think you guys have been on the forefront of getting involved in this space and really starting to support the, uh, the startup ecosystem. I know when I arrived in France several years ago, you know, you guys were, were involved yeah. in all of the events already and really kind of supporting the ecosystem. For the companies in France that still haven't completely understood the value and the opportunities here, what would be your recommendation for them to get started, to, to really start, you know, getting involved and, and supporting the ecosystem and, and seeing what's available for their organizations? Well, I think maybe uh, go to Station F, have a look <laughs> at the startups who are there. Start learning. I mean, there's a lot around AI, and I think it's really going through the concrete projects. I mean, how the technology can really help companies transform and have an impact. I talked a lot about the companies. You know, there's a lot we are doing also on the societal impact because obviously there's, you know, great projects we can also work on and help. So we have big ambitions to also use AI to solve some of the human problems. It might take a little bit more time, but uh, just spend time looking at that. Yeah, go and visit those great startups and just, you know, be part of it. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for your sponsorship of France's AI. She deserves a big round of applause, and thank you all for your attention. Thank you.